this is Glory Live, and we're excited about this opportunity to be coming into your homes, um, wherever you are able to watch this around the world, whether you're at work, and if you, even if you have the opportunity while being incarcerated in a prison somewhere that you can gain access to the Internet, we're excited about you tuning in to Glory Live here on Kingdom KBN, a Kingdom Broadcasting Network. I'm your host, Apostle R. Joshua Mitchell, and we're going to uh, have a wonderful uh, broadcast for you today, and I have a, a wonderful um, a man of God that's going to come and talk about what God is doing in and through his life uh, in the area of the prophetic and intercessory prayer, which is something that we need to be doing on an ongoing basis, praying and, and interceding. Amen. We thank God for those of you that have uh, called in um, and those of you that, that are watching and have been watching. We praise God for you. We thank you for your emails as well. And uh, there's going to be a number going to show up on your screen. And we want you to uh, get your prayer requests in. And if you can make that prayer request known while we're live on the air, they'll get that information to me. And me and our guests will... Pray for your prayer needs, your prayer concerns live on the broadcast. So we're looking forward to you getting your prayer requests, your prayer needs, your prayer concerns in. And you can do that right now. That number is on the screen now. You can also utilize that same number to call to call in to become a KBN family member. That um, you are saying, I want to stand with you um, and I want to support you financially so that you can cover the entire earth with the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's our assignment, is to cover the earth with the gospel of God's kingdom and with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is what we've been raised up to do as a network, and we thank God for that. We're excited about all that God is doing. We ask that you will continue to pray for us as we uh, continue to move forward in uh, building, uh, as God, rather, is using us to build Kingdom Broadcasting Network. We need your financial support. We have several uh, ventures that we're doing through Kingdom Broadcasting and with Kingdom Broadcasting. As some of you all may be aware, we are trying to launch a station in the area by which we have our headquarters, which is in Houston, Texas. And uh, we, we are days away from that happening, uh, but we still have a, a short of finances that we need for you to support and help us so that we can make this happen. Amen. We believe God will touch your heart, that you will sow financially, that you will give your contribution by becoming a KBN family because we're in the kingdom of God. And this is a family affair. Let's build this together, this, this network, so that we can take back the airways. And that's the assignment, ultimately, is to take the airways back for the kingdom of God. Amen. You know about our project. Some of you all know about our project that we're doing in uh, Emo State, Nigeria, uh, in Africa. Uh, we're still moving forward, full steam ahead with that with that initiative, with Kingdom Broadcasting having a presence in the continent of Africa and the country of Nigeria, we're excited about that. And then once that is going and uh, as it's supposed to be and wherever the Lord says for us to go to the next continent, we will go. Amen. And we thank and praise God for such an opportunity to be uh, deemed worthy by him to take on such an, a, a, a uh, magnanimous um, operation in television. This is a huge operation. It's nothing to be taken lightly. It's a lot involved. It's a lot of money involved in making it work and keeping it going. Amen. Even at the beginning stages here, it's a lot involved. But we're trusting that you are praying and you're seeking God's face in how you would give, amen, in terms of the dollar amount. No uh, amount is too small, 50 cent, $1, $2, $5, all the way up to millions of dollars. 
Amen. And we are doing the work of the kingdom so that we can give God what he wants. Amen. He wants the airways back. That's his specific assignment to me. Son, I've raised you up as one of the ones that would give me back the airways and in television. And that's what we're going to do. That's what we are doing. And we praise God. We want you to be a part of that as well. Amen. We've been sharing with you the opportunities we have to go on satellite uh, uh, around our nation and worldwide as well. We need you to be in prayer and believe in God for that. Amen. Somebody is watching right now that God has been tugging at your heart and, and saying, you know, I need to give and help, help this man of God out in making Kingdom Broadcasting Network be what God called it to be. Amen. If that's you, then don't delay. Be obedient to what God says so that we can work this together. Even though you are not physically here in, uh, in, in Houston, Texas, if you are watching, and I know you're watching around the world, you're not physically here in the country of America, but by you sending your love gift, your donation, your contribution, you are making a statement that I stand with Apostle R. Joshua Mitchell in Kingdom Broadcasting to cover the earth with the gospel of the kingdom. We're expanding the kingdom of God through Kingdom Broadcasting Network. Amen. And we're excited about uh, you being a part of what God is doing here through Kingdom Broadcasting Network. Amen. We also uh, want to keep on your mind um, actually, I should have been made this announcement some time ago now. Next month, we'll be coming up on our third year, our third year celebration for Kingdom Broadcasting Network's existence, November the 14th. We plan to have, if not all of the month of November, at least uh, the first couple of weeks leading up to uh, the 14, and uh, I think that's, the 14 is on a Wednesday, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, on the calendar. And, but we're going to be having um, a celebration of Kingdom Broadcasting Network's existence. Amen. Right here in the studio, a live studio audience. And, I, and you know, I really want to emphasize, for those of you that are watching uh, here in the Houston, Texas area and surrounding cities, you can come down to the studio and be a part of our studio audience. Amen. We have room for you to come and participate in our studio audience. There's no cost, no charge. There's no tickets you have to get. Amen. Just simply call or call and say I'm coming and, or just show up. At, uh, we go, of course, this is live right now. We're live on the air at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Amen. All the way to 9.30 p.m. Central Time. And if you're in the surrounding areas outside of Houston, uh, you want to make that drive to come down here, come on. Come and be a part of our studio audience. We want you to be here. Amen. Amen. And then, of course, to you, uh, those of you that are in fivefold ministry from apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we extended an opportunity for you as well. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to send out information for all of next week, maybe the last uh, last couple of weeks, starting next week, uh, where for actually for the rest of this month, we're going to be having, we're opening up for pastors and fivefold ministers to come. If you have congregations or you're an overseer of a church and all that, we want you to come. We want to give you space to preach and minister the word of God. Uh, amen. Starting on next week, and we want you to bring your congregation to get a, a, an idea and a feel of what it feel like to be on television. Amen. Uh, looking into these cameras, glory to God, amen. And in all my years in television, at some time, I still get a little jitterbugs. But as I begin to open up my mouth and share and express, I notice that those jitterbugs, they go away, amen. But we're extending an opportunity for all fivefold ministers to come out. It's going to be an ongoing thing, but we're starting on next week. It's going to be an ongoing thing, month after month. We want you to come and be a part of this growth, this development and growth of Kingdom Broadcasting Network right here in the city of Houston, Texas. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing. Amen. 
And please forgive me because I like to always open up with a word of prayer and I didn't do that. So let me pause right now and do that. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this privilege. We give your name to praise the glory and the honor for you and you alone are worthy to be praised. We say yes to your will, Father. Oh, God, we pray, Father God, as, as we are used by you on tonight, Lord God, to share with many around the world things that is dear to your heart. We pray, Father God, that every person watching, even right now, Father, will begin to have their, their hearts and ears open, their eyes open to receive from you, amen, the, the engrafted word of God. We bless you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We thank you. We praise God. Let me read um, a couple of verses of scripture out of the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Um, I think I want to start at, uh, oh, maybe at verse 1. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. And I'll read all the way down to verse 9. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot should tread upon that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now listen at these next verses. It says in verse 6, Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8 says, This book of the law, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, now listen at this now, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. God says, if you do not Depart from the book of law out of your mouth, but shall meditate on it day and night, God says, and observe to do according to all that is written in the book. He says that we will make our way prosperous, and he said we shall have good success. We. You see, there's a responsibility on our part. We want God to do everything for us. And that's not the God of the Bible. God has done what he has done for us. Now that's our part that we must do. And if you want to be prosperous and have good success, he's just given us the antidote for that. He's just given us what we need to do in order to, uh, to be prosperous and have good success. He just did that. Then he says in verse 9, Have not I commanded thee? This is the third time he's going to say this. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now, that's the reading of the word of, of God. 
Amen. We want to bless God for the reading of his word. But we just read how important it is for us to be strong and be of good courage no matter what we're going through, no matter what we are faced with in our life. It is indicative upon everyone that named the name of Jesus as a child of God to understand that if you want to be prosperous and have good success, here is the road map for that. Here is what we have to do in order for that to happen. Amen? So we need to be aware and understand and know what God's word is saying. Amen, amen, amen. I'm excited about what God is doing for you, for your children, for your family. If you would hold true to what God says, if you would hold true to the word of God and obey God's word, you're going to be prosperous and have good success. And that word prosperity is not just dealing with money. As a matter of fact, Brother Paul, excuse me, the Apostle John was speaking to Brother Gaius in 3 John. He said, I wish above all that you were prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. That word prosper in the, in the uh, original Greek in, 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 in 3 John is the same word that's found here in the Old Testament in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The word prosper in the Greek is the Greek word you are dio, and it basically means to have a well journey. God wants everything in your life from top to bottom, uh, left to right, every area, every little minute thing in your life to prosper, not just monetarily, but when it comes to mental, when it comes to health-wise, physical, as well as your soul. He wants every part of you to prosper. Have a well journey. This life in Christ, when Jesus says in John 10, 10, I come to give you life and that more abundantly, he means just that. He wants to give us a, give us an, a super abundance of life himself in us. And that's the key to your success. Obeying the word, not departing from the law of, uh, the law of this book, obeying the word of God, doing what he says, we're going to make our way prosperous, and we're going to have great success. Amen? So as, as we often want, uh, like to do is open up with Scripture to um, begin to set a standard for the broadcast and however the Lord wants to speak, but for even more so for those of you that are watching around the world, amen, that would grab hold to the Word of God and allow the Word of God to saturate your life. Amen. And that's what it's all about. Let's obey God's word. As I stated earlier, we got a wonderful uh, lineup. Amen. Um, my first guest here is his first time being here. And our second uh, preacher that's going to come, he's been here before. And he was here, he was here recently on last week. He's, he's going to be making his way here shortly. Amen. But we want to get prepared to bring our guest speaker up right now. Amen. So that um, uh, we can introduce him formally. Amen. Glory to God, and we just thank and praise God for all that God is doing and what God wants to do. God is a great God, and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. He is a great God, and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. And you know, um, as our guest is preparing to take the stage, let's remember now that prayer line is available for you, and you can get your prayer request in now. If you get it in now, and we get that information, we'll pray for you live on the air. Amen. And even if you don't get it in while we're live, still get it in and we're going to still pray for you as well. Amen. We all also want you to send us an email. Um, amen. We're in the process of getting, getting our Facebook account up, our Twitter account, and, and all the other different social networks up there so we can make contact with people around the world and they can know what God is doing through Kingdom Broadcasting Network. And amen. We're excited about that. It's time to influence the planet with the kingdom of God's uh, uh, um, uh, um, concepts is where I'm looking for culture. That's the word. With, the key, with God's culture, kingdom culture. Amen. Uh, because we've been inundated with a satanic culture, now it's time to understand and know God's kingdom culture. 
And that's what we are doing here at Kingdom Broadcasting Network. I want you to help me welcome to the stage a longtime friend of mine, uh, awesome man of God, Prophet Nathaniel Nwubu. Help me welcome him. God bless you, Prophet. Thank you very much. Brother. How's everything going with you? Also, all is moving well. Amen. If you are in the kingdom of God, yes. it should move well for you. It should move well. Amen. Amen. want you to uh, tell everybody who you are. Yes. Amen. And, and uh, a little bit about your ministry and, and what you do and, and how long you've been in the country. Yes. And how long you've been in the city of Houston. Thank you very much. Uh, before I speak to the people out there in the world, I will say a brief prayer. Uh, that God will touch each and every one of them. God will grant them wisdom, grant them knowledge. Father, we thank you. You are the King of kings, and you are the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and end. Whosoever will seek you will find you. Yes. May your power, may your spirit guide your people and bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the question. My name is Nathaniel. The Lord has anointed me to be a messenger, a teacher, and a whipper of men and women to become intercessors. Amen. Uh, I came to this country in 1973, all the way from Nigeria. I went to school in Norfolk, Virginia. I got my first degree there, came to Texas in 78, got my master's degree. Amen. Amen. Man. And uh, the Lord called me into the ministry in 1983. All right. Yes, that's a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, praise God. Yes. Um, and uh, can you talk a little bit about your ministry and, and how God is using you and what you're doing? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the ministry of intercession is a special calling. The Lord called me into this ministry of intercession to pray for the nation, yes. to pray for the city, to pray for individuals and organizations. I believe in the power of prayer. Yes. Prayer changes everything. Yes, it does. Yes, the Lord called me into intercessory prayer. Some people don't understand what is called an intercessor. It's not a jet fighter. It's not an airplane. An intercessor is a man or a woman that have surrendered their lives Unto the Lord, yes. stands in the gap yes. to pray on behalf of others. Praise God. It's a yielded lifestyle. Amen. A surrendered lifestyle that one has to yield himself to Christ. Right. And then be used of the Lord. Praise God. To pray on behalf of others. Well, praise God. Um, I know that you've been, you've been doing a, a number of trainings. Yes. In different uh, churches yes. uh, around the city of Houston. Have you traveled beyond the city of Houston with some of your trainings? Yes. Yes. Uh, the call to become an intercessor, the Lord called me to target the city and train intercessors. Yes. So I felt that it's very, very important for the churches to know the importance of intercessory prayer. Right. Nothing happens until somebody prays. That's right. And God cannot move his hand unless the intercessors intercede. Amen. And God's hand can move on behalf of those intercessors calling upon the Lord. And that's very important because um, uh, what you're saying is absolutely true. Even though the Bible tells us that the greatest intercessor is Jesus, he's ever interceding on our behalf. But he's intercede on, on our behalf based upon what you just said a moment ago. We got to intercede. Yes. We got to be praying, yes. interceding for whatever, the, whatever we're interceding for, whatever the, the issues or concerns are, mm -hmm. then Christ is going to intercede to the Father. Yes. Uh, he's the go-between you know, between man and, and God the Father on yeah. our behalf. And yes. that's what intercession really is, yes. is praying on behalf of other people. Yes. Uh, can you talk about... Uh, before I ask you about your book here in a few moments, can you talk a little bit about some of the uh, uh, experiences you have had? Uh, well, let me back up. First of all, share with us how God dealt with you about uh, this particular ministry that you're doing. Yes. Thank you very much, Apostle. You know, I was in a prayer mood, and I said, Lord, you spoke to Moses. You spoke to Prophet Samuel. Yes. You spoke to Elijah and Elisha. Right. Lord, speak to me. 
Because God is no respecter of individuals. That's right. So on my 40 days of fasting and praying, I was seeking the mind of the Lord. On the 19th day, I had a vision. Yes. You know, the Bible says without vision, the people perish. Amen. So I had a vision, a man coming towards my driveway. I said, what is this man coming to do? He came out and he pointed to me. He said, target the city, train one million intercessors. I said, oh, I have one secretary. How is she going to answer all the phone wow. coming from a million people? Right. And then I said, where is the resources? It takes money to raise an army. And then number three, I said, where is the hall? In Nigeria, they call it hall. Right. America can call it stadium or sanctuary. And then the man spoke, the angel of the Lord. He said, you target the city, train one million intercessors. You do the mailing and I will Amen. do the delivery. Praise God. It was uh, like a fire shot in my bone. I woke up, I wrote the vision down, knowing fully well that God has spoken to me. Yes. Now, Apostle, let me tell you, the Bible is two-thirds visions and dreams. That's right. The one-third is history. Right. If you take away the visions and dreams in the Bible, all you have is one-third, right. which is history. Amen. Amen. God spoke to Elijah by vision. God spoke to Paul by vision. God spoke to Elijah by vision and yes. Jeremiah. And God speaks to his servants. He said, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord God, will speak to him in a vision That's right. and in a dream. That's right. He said, but my servant Moses is not so. To him, I speak to mouth to mouth. So you, you primarily uh, have an assignment by our, our God, our Father. Yes. To raise up in the city of Houston yes. one million yes. intercessors. Yes. Can you share with us how successful have you been uh, in in making uh, or doing what God say do? What what's 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 been your? Uh, well, let me ask you this: How successful have you been? And can you give us an idea by percentage wise how close are you to get into that million? Yes. It's a, a big task, and uh, this task is not to be carried by one man alone. Right. It's a big vision. It's not my vision, but it's the God's vision. Right. And when he said, target Houston and train one million intercessors, God knew that there are over six million people in the city of Houston right. and surrounding counties. That's right. And so I'm making every effort to use the necessary tool available, radio, television, newspapers, internet, and other technical or digital uh, information yes. to reach the people. So I'm doing everything based on the resources that I have at my disposal right. to communicate with the pastors in the city. The word has to go out to the pastors for them to know that it is time to train their people as intercessors. Amen. This is not a time to sleep. That's I'm right. calling America to wake up. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, <laughs> so how successful have you been in making contact with pastors in the city yes. of Houston? Yes, I'm making every effort. Uh, I would say it's, it's successful, but uh, there are some still some uh, some resistance. Yes. Uh, because one, they have not, they don't know who I am, and uh, they have not had, you know, they don't have clearance as to where I'm coming from, and uh, the information hasn't gotten to them at the right time. Right. And so there are some procrastination and some delays, but some pastors have embraced the training of intercessors in the local church. Praise God. And so God is moving in their spirit. Praise My God. responsibility is to do the mailing, and God's responsibility is to do the delivery. That's right. That's right. Well, um, in terms of um, going into the different churches, mm -hmm. have you found it difficult to go in um, uh, different eth ethnic races of churches, different backgrounds, different, you know, African Americans, whites, and Latinos. Have you found it difficult? Have you found it uh, not difficult to go into the, to, to, the, to the different churches? I don't think it's difficult to go to those churches, but my experiences is that those that really understood where I was coming from, that it does a need for intercessory training in their church, have embraced this training. I have several churches uh, that uh, have large congregations that have called me, and I went there and did the training. I don't have any problem. Praise God. Yes. Well, that's good. That's, I mean, that's really good news because it seems as if though we're starting to get past some of the racial barriers mm -hmm. within the body of Christ that's been paramount uh, and evident 
uh, throughout this country. Yes. And things is, uh, uh, God, is thought, God is always moving, no doubt. He's always doing what he's doing, but yes. we're starting to hear God's voice. Yes. We're starting to pull down this racial divide that's been going on. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it starts with prayer. Uh, every great, every great uh, uh, move of God, every great operation of God, every yes. great administration of God yes. always started with prayer. Yes. Where do you see uh, the city of Houston and other cities uh, that God have already sent you to that will be moving in this direction? Yes. Um, I went to, as you asked uh, some time ago, about where I have been, I've been to places like uh, Dallas, where I trained some intercessors, and they were very, very excited. And I believe that God is going to be targeting so many cities because prayer centers and prayer cells are rising up all over right. the United States. Right. And uh, I believe that the vision that God gave me, he must have also given it to others. Right. And this vision is not one man's vision. It will take all of us working together to take over our city wow. and to take over our nation. Wow, yes. wow. All right. Now, I know that uh, without uh, where you have, God has given you, rather, mm -hmm. the opportunity to write. Uh, so you put a book together. Yes. And I want to just kind of feature this book here for a moment. You put a book together, a training manual mm -hmm. for intercessors and prayer warriors. Yes. And um, uh, this is a good book. If we can have the this camera to get a shot of this of this particular book uh, right now so you can get an idea there we go now you can see how how nice and 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 gorgeous that the cover is on the book it's got prayer hands in the bible and i mean it's it's big and when you open it up uh, i mean it's very easy to read i've gone through the book it's very easy to read amen and uh, so can you uh, share with us how this book came about? Yes, thank you very much. You know, you cannot defeat the enemy unless you have the right arsenal. Yes. You have the right weapon. And so the Lord, by revelation, it took me 24 years to put this book together. Wow. So it's not cut and paste. Right. This is from the Holy Spirit. My God. Every page of this book is highly anointed. Wow. When this book was dedicated, I had a vision. And the Lord said, this manual, whoever will use this manual yes. worldwide will be able to demolish and dislocate the kingdom of darkness. Wow. Every wow. page that is loaded with scriptures is easy to read. It's international yes, standard. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I believe so many people have read it and said, look, prophet, we need this book on our shelf. We need this book for our Bible study. Right. We need this book for our spiritual warfare training. I believe that the churches all across the land, all over the world, right. should be looking for this book. It's nowhere than here that you can get it to get your people going. Amen. Well, Amen. I, I'm, I'm looking at the table of contents, and yes. you, have, you have some good titles here. Yes. Uh, part number one deals with the introduction to intercessory prayer ministry. Yes. Yes. And you have six, six sec, uh, uh, sections yes. just upon the part number one. Mm. Uh, training of warriors, mandate from heaven, intercessor defined, the mm. character and lifestyle of an intercessor, mm. questions about intercessory, uh, the call for an, an intercessor. Uh, mm. All that is marvelous. Yes. Uh, part number two deals with the intercessor. You have five sections there. The holiness for intercessors, the power of an intercessor, the call for repentance, hindrances to a closer walk, questions about sin and repentance, and then we go to part number three. You have spiritual warfare. You have, I believe it's eight uh, sessions there. They deal with Satan declares war, weapons of warfare, modify the flesh, armor of God, workbook on spiritual warfare, prayer and fasting workshop enlistment in God's army and uh, the power of prayer and fasting. Then you have part number four that deals with the power of prayer, part number five, and it goes on. It stops at part number five. So it is well put together. This book is well put together. You need a copy of this book. Now, you can, you can obtain this book either by calling um, Prophet Nathaniel's number or you can simply call our office and we'll make sure that you get a copy of this book. 
If you are not in the Houston and metropolitan area of Houston, then you, can, you need to order this book. If, if you're in this area, you need to not only order the book, but make your way to some of the training classes. Can you share uh, when do you have your training, what, what day of the week, what time, and, and uh, where is your training held at? Yes, we are strategically located. You know, in real estate, it says location, location, location. Mm -hmm. We are located at a, a place called 141 Greens Road, at I-45. Right. It's the church is called the New Beginning Church. Right. We have our regular training on Mondays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. I call it the two hours of power. Right. So right. if you live in Houston area, you feel free to come there. You can call this number, 281-447-3399, or you can call the prayer line at this program, and uh, you'll be giving more details. Amen. Yes. Again, uh, those classes are held every Monday from yes. 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. That's at the New Beginnings Church at 141 Greens Road at uh, I-45 North in the Greens Point section of Houston. That's, of course, Houston, Texas, 77060. And again, his telephone number is 281. It should show up on the screen shortly, 281 447 3399. There it is there. Or again, you can call our office here at uh, 281 522 and we'll definitely get some information. Or since you're online, you can also send an email requesting a copy of Intercessory Prayer, uh, Intercessory and Prayer Warriors. Uh, uh, Prophet Nathaniel, can you, can you just really kind of uh, uh, home in more in terms of why it is so important not only to pray but to uh, pray as an intercessor yes thank you very much for that question you know Christ lived a life of an intercessor sometimes yes. he will leave his disciples and go to the mountains to pray right sometimes he will pray all night and so if we are going to follow Christ and if we are his disciples we he's our role model right and so even in heaven, he ever lived to intercede for us. Right. For over 2,000 years, he's interceding for us. Amen. The Holy Spirit is interceding for us with groanings yeah. that could not be That's uttered. Right. Amen. If Jesus is interceding and the Holy Ghost on earth here is interceding, who are we not to intercede Amen. for our Lord one? And so intercession is very, very critical. If you become an intercessor, you are going to be used of the Lord as God's soldier That's right. to enforce the laws and the commandments of God on earth. That's right. The Lord spoke in the book of Ezekiel 22 verse 30. He said, I sought for a man yes. that will stand in yes. the gap That's right. and plead on behalf of the land. But he said, I couldn't find any. Amen. And so God is saying, I want you to be an intercessor, not just that widow. Not That's just right. that, uh, you know. That's right. Uh, that, uh, you know. But God is looking for every believer to be an intercessor. If we have intercessors in every family, we will destroy the works of the devil. Yes, yes. And we can take over this country yes. for the Lord. Yes. He's calling on us. He's, he's, I exhort there for right. the prayers and supplications and intercession be made for all men. Amen. He's definitely calling on us. And the, uh, Jesus himself said, men ought always to pray. Pray. Amen. And faint not. But I was just, uh, just reminiscing and thinking about, as you were speaking, in what we call the model prayer, the prayer of Jesus, the Lord's prayer. Yes. Intercession is all in that prayer. Yes. Because not only are we to pray uh, you know, uh, for our own sins, yes. uh, we ought to also pray for those who have sinned and yes. sinned against God, us through God, or yes. I ultimately sinned against God by way of attacking us, and vice versa. Yes. So you have intercession all throughout the prayer of Jesus, which we know as the Lord's Prayer, yes. which is, which is uh, a, a model by which we should pray. Uh, all throughout the Bible, um, we find various different kinds of prayers and ultimately they all lead up to intercessory prayers yes. uh, to intercede for excuse me whomever to intercede for whatever the situation and as we know that there's a lot of demonic activity that is going on around the world yes. 
you coming out of Nigeria, coming out of Africa, you know firsthand yes. uh, of a lot of, of the serious demonic activity, which are now in this country. Uh, we have a lot of demonic uh, situations and activity that is going on that most of the church, and I don't say this unreluctantly, but most of the church have no clue that exists. And uh, what we need to realize is that uh, not only are we to intercede and pray for each other or for other people, but we, but we need to be warring in the spirit against all kinds of demonic encroachment, okay. uh, uh, traps, and so forth, and things like that. Can you speak to some of the experiences that you have had personally in times of intercessory prayer, if you had to come up against a witch or a witch, a witchcraft or some, uh, some kind of satanic activity or whatever? Can you share some things? Yes. It's very, very important as an intercessor to be really equipped. You cannot become an intercessor when the vessel that is carrying the word of God is impure yes. and unholy. Yes. And so as an intercessor, we train you to be in a position that you are living a holy life. Amen. The Bible says, pursue peace and holiness without which no man can see the Lord. Yes. And so there must be a period of repentance, a period of uh, cleansing and purification yes. so that when the demons come, they will find nothing in you. Amen. Jesus said, you Satan, you have nothing in me. And so I have encountered various demonic activities, but the Lord has given me what is called defense, divine defense yes, yes. to protect me from the attack of the enemy. Amen. And so you must walk in righteousness. You must consecrate yourself. You must dedicate yourself. Wow. You must be pure and holy. He said, without holiness, no man can see the Lord. My God. And so he who has called you is holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. The problem we have with many people today is that they eat their cake and still want to have it. My God. God said, don't do that. If you are going to serve me, serve me with your entire heart. Yes. The heart must be pure. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they, they shall, shall see, see God. God. And God will send his angels to guide you and to protect you. And if you do that, you are going to be free from the, any attack of the enemy. The well, Bible says, a thousand may fall by your side, ten thousand at your right hand. Right. But none shall come near thee. Amen. We are invisible. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, you, well, you know what? You just share some major principles in terms of being effective in intercessory prayer. Yes. Number one, your life got to be clean. Yes. Your heart got to be right toward God and before God. You have to walk a, a pure life. And then what would you say to people that would come up to you and say, well, we can't walk like that. There's nobody pure. You know, there's nobody really walking in holiness. What's your response to that? Look, it's always a, one thing that is very, very surplus in this world is the spirit of, of excuse. Yes. Uh, excuse to do this and excuse to do that. And they compromise. And the devil likes to deceive. One of the weapons that the enemy has used in this world is deception. That's right. The Bible tells me very clearly, say, with man, it is impossible. That's right. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. And so we need to depend on the Holy Spirit. Yes. Your flesh cannot do it. But with the power of God in your life and the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you, yes. you can overcome every temptation. My God. But you need the Holy Spirit. Yes. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot do it. Amen. And so the power of fasting and prayer will make you to mortify the deeds of the flesh. My God. You take away the chicken and the enchilada and then <laughs> push the plate by the side. Fast and pray. <clears throat> and the Lord God will give you the grace to mortify the deeds of the flesh so it can live for the Lord. Because we are the sanctified vessel yes. that the Holy Spirit is using in these last days to enforce the laws and the word of the Lord. So that's one of the reasons why we're not seeing um, the power of God move in our day and time like he moved back in days past. Not just back in the Bible days, yes. but even in some of our, some of our more modern times uh, back in the 19th century, mm -hmm. the, uh, well, going back beyond that, but 19th and 20th century, we're in the 21st century now, mm -hmm. but when I look at history, I see how great men and women of God 
uh, were on their faces fasting and praying all the time yes. to where uh, it, it, it really uh, got God's attention and God began to manifest his power. Is this one of the reasons why we're not seeing that today? Because people who are trying to pray or intercede for others, perhaps their life is not right, they're not clean, they're not pure? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the thing is, is, if you are going to live a spiritual life, be ready to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Yes. The scripture tells us that uh, we, those old lifestyles, those old carnal nature should be done away with. Amen. He says, shall we continue to sin so that the grace may abound? He said, no, no. We were servants to sin and unrighteousness. But now that we are now born again, filled with the Spirit of God, we should be servants of righteousness and holiness. And that holiness is both from inside to outside. That's right. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. So, so it's fair to say that, that I, I know I believe this, I'm sure you do too, at some point in time in our lifetime, God is raising up individuals that will first uh, make sure that their life is pure before God, they're walking in integrity and yes. honest before God, yes. so that they can begin to develop a, a prayer life of intercession to intercede and, 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 and that God would release uh, strategies because part of an intercessor is to also receive strategies from God and how to deal with certain things. Yes. How to pull down demonic strongholds in certain regions yes. and in certain areas. Yes. I know um, in Houston alone, well, in, in, as a matter of fact, in this country, uh, in all these different regions, there are uh, uh, powers of darkness that are assigned to regions in this country as it is around the world. And we need to inter begin to intercede and pray to the Father mm -hmm. so that we can receive the download from him as to how we are to attack this through intercession mm -hmm. and defeat it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, um, what is God uh, saying to you uh, as a result of you raising up this one million which is the beginning point here in the Houston area, yes. which subsequently was spread around the United States and perhaps around the world. Yes. What is God saying to you concerning as this is happening, what are some of the things that we're going to look forward of seeing that will come out of this? Yes. You know, I, I always believe that prayer changes everything. Yes. And we, as we, we start with the family. The family is under attack. That's right. Satanic attack. Even the church is under attack. And if we don't have the right foundation, yes. it's going to crumble. Amen. And so laying the right foundation is the training. I believe that sh there should be a prayer training center in every church. Amen. Where the intercessors are trained. Where we are given the foundation on how to become an intercessor. If that is done, then they are going to grow. You're not just praying, praying, praying. That's right. That's right. If you don't know the principles of intercession, then you're not going to succeed. That's right. It's like saying, well, I know how to shoot, and I'm going to punch up and get a gun, right. and you're heading to Iraq <laughs> or heading to <laughs> Afghanistan. How, yes. how, how long are you going to last? Amen. It won't last too long because, number one, you are not trained. That's right. Number two, you don't know how to shoot. You know, some people have gone, no bullet. They have bullet, and they have no gun. They have bullet and gun and don't know how to shoot. And sometimes they shoot, they shoot their foot. Wow. And they shoot their loved one. <laughs> and that's the problem we have today. That's right. Because of lack of knowledge. Right. And so what God is saying here, train my people, equip my people, mentor my people, then deploy them into the harvest field. Amen. He that winneth soul is wise. Amen. The truly, truly the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And what? so this training it's very, very critical. Yes, it is. Let me ask you a question concerning that training because yeah. I've, been, I've been in your trainings. Of course, I've videotaped quite a number of your trainings. Yes. Um, uh, phenomenal trainings. And I would say to everyone that is watching, especially in the, in the metropolitan area of Houston, um, you need, if you haven't been at any of his trainings, if he has not come to your church, first of all, you want to come and sit in on at least one of the trainings and begin to understand how important it is to be trained in how to pray in accessory prayers. 
Number two, you, uh, if you're not a senior leader uh, that have the oversight of a congregation, then you want to tell your senior leader and perhaps bring him to the train as well. But more than that, if a uh, prophet can get into the, uh, at your church where the senior pastor is or senior leader or senior oversight to begin to train right there at the home bases, which is where I'm sure he really would love to do as to come into your church to do that. But you need to come to some of the training because I'm telling you, it's, some, it's, some, it's an awesome training, some wonderful uh, things that you will learn. And I'll tell you what, this is a praying man. He prays all the time, all the time. Ever since I've been knowing him, he pray, pray, pray. And that's what God wants us to do is to pray unto him. Pray without ceasing. Pray. Men ought always to pray and not faint. We need to find ourselves praying no matter what we're going through. But know what you're praying for. Man. Know how to pray. Yes. That's why the training, that's why this training manual uh, and, the, and the AMF uh, School of the Prophets and Intercessor uh, 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 classes is so important. You need to know. You need to know how to defeat the enemy or enemies in your life that is tormenting you, that have you oppressed, your family oppressed. You need to begin to deal with some generational issues in your family some curses in your family, all kinds of stuff. And through intercessory prayer, through this training of intercessory prayer, you will learn how to do just that. I'm telling you, it is worth the investment of coming to class, signing up, participating, buying a manual, staying there, graduating, and it's a great graduation as well. He gives a certificate out the whole nine yards. He goes all the way with it. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I'm telling you, you will become an asset to your own home, to your own life, your own home, your family, your church, or wherever you are on your job, wherever you are. You will become a major asset because then you will not uh, 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 entertain, number one, then or allow things to get to you so easily. When people say the wrong thing, or if you're working for somebody, they say the wrong thing, or they go off on you or whatever the case. You can just stand right there in front of them and begin to start praying on their behalf. Now, I got to ask you a question because something came to my mind when you was talking, and it's fresh in my thoughts right now, and that is this. In your training, as I stated, I've been there on many of them because I've videotaped, and I've, uh, I know pretty much what's in the manual, what you teach, and thank God that you are, you are teaching truth to the word of God. Yes. But let me ask you this question. Have you ever encountered any of your students or anybody ever asking you concerning intercessory prayer about praying for somebody's demise, praying for somebody to be harmed or praying for somebody to be hurt or for their failure? Have anybody ever approached you like that? No, I don't think, uh, you see, my teaching, you see, if you have the character of Christ, right, that's what we are trying to implant into you yes. to build you to become like Jesus yes. on the face of this earth. There was a woman in the Bible that was caught in the very act. Yes. They brought this woman, say she was committing adultery. We are going to stone him and uh, stone her. Right. And Jesus started to write things on the ground and many of them started to depart. Eventually it was, the, it was this woman and Jesus. Right. And Jesus said, where are your accusers? He said, they've gone. He said, woman, go and sin no more. I want to tell you, my brother, the character of Christ is not a character of retaliation. Right. And so remember when they came to arrest Jesus. Right. What happened? Oh, yeah. They caught, Peter cut off That's the right. air. Amen. Jesus picked up the air. And put it back. Removed yeah. the sand yep. and put it back. Yes. And so we are taught not to retaliate and pay no man evil for evil. Uh, I'm so glad that God uh, had me to ask you that question and you gave the answer that you gave because believe it or not, prophet, there are a number of people, believe it or not, there are a number of people that are praying against, these are believers, hmm. they are praying against somebody else that have done them wrong. They are praying against somebody else that have said something wrong to them. Hmm. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and a lot of people don't know that they, well, I ain't going to say a lot of them don't know. Some of them very well. Many of them very well may know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, that's witchcraft. Yes. That's what that is. Yes. When, when you as a believer and somebody 
uh, offended you in whatever way they offended you, and you pray against them, that's witchcraft. And you shouldn't be doing that. That is against God. You are actually being used by Satan uh, involving in an in area of witchcraft. And believe it or not, prophet, that goes on quite a bit within the confines of the institutionalized church. I'm not saying, uh, uh, and I'm very careful in, in what I say, I'm not talking about the Church of Jesus Christ, the Ecclesia, that's not institutionalized. I'm talking about the institutionalized church mm -hmm. that, is a, that is a church of religion. Yes. Christ's church, and you adequately said it a moment ago, Christ's church and Christ's teachings is uh, not to retaliate. God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Exactly. That's what Christ said. Yes. And that's what he would do. Mm -hmm. And anytime somebody does anything to you as a child of God, you should not pray against them. You should pray for them yes. that God will have mercy upon their life. Yes. You should want to see that individual delivered and set free and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ yes. ultimately mm -hmm. and not pray against them, not pray that God will hurt them and mm -hmm. that God will do this and that. Now, it's a difference when we're talking about an individual that you know is a witch. Mm -hmm. You know that they're a witch. You know Satan has released witches and warlocks and all this. Now, that's a, that's, a, that's a far cry different, and actually what you're doing is praying against the spirit that is operating in the individuals anyway. You're not praying even against an individual unless God specifically tells you to. I had a, a case, uh, uh, case in point, um, I think it was in 2003, 2002, 2003, mm -hmm. uh, God had revealed to me of a person that had claimed to be in the body of Christ, and he spoke to me and said that this person was a witch. And he quoted his own word to me, and he gave it to two other people simultaneously, all three of us at the same time. Because it was a Sunday morning, I got the phone call, and they had me on a two-way, now it's a three-way call, all three of us on the phone, and, and we all had the same thing at the same time. God quoted and said, suffer not a witch to live, and he brought this individual's uh, picture or face to us in, you know, uh, uh, in, our, in our presence, in our dreams and, and visions and stuff. And so I knew what he was talking about. And it had proven to be thus that this individual was, was, was actually partnering, uh, knowing very well what they were doing, uh, was partnering with Satan as one of Satan's uh, uh, witch, witches and everything. And so we had to deal with that situation. I don't know what has become of that individual. That was way back in 03. Somewhere around up and down, know what has become of it. But that's a far cry different. If you offend me, we are brothers in the Lord, and you offend me, I'm not going to pray against your demise. Mm. I'm not going to pray that things don't go right for you. On no. the contrary, yes. that's not Christ. No. That's not Christ's likeness. That's wrong. I'm going to pray that God will have mercy upon you. Yes. First of all, if, I, if you offended me, then I'm going to find out if I call, if I say.